This is my review of The Sims 4 My Second Pet stuff. This is a part of a series where I review every single pack for The Sims 4, including the older ones, new video uploaded every week. The reason I call this My Second Pet stuff instead of My First Pet stuff, which is the official name, is because this DLC pack requires you to own the Cats and Dogs DLC pack as a prerequisite. It comes with some random costumes for cats and dogs. It comes with some pet inspired build by for kids rooms. And it also comes with a rodent cage. This pack is the most controversial pack for The Sims 4, so there is a lot to go through. Starting off with the cast, I will say the human side of the cast is awful. All Sims of all ages get one t-shirt. Weirdly, the female one has more swatches than the male one. The t-shirt is basic and uninspired. Many other content creators have actually recreated the designs in Photoshop themselves to show how entry level the designs were. Male Sims get one hair mesh and female Sims get two hair meshes. They are okay, I guess. Kids and toddlers got a onesie which isn't too bad to be fair and adults got a hamster costume rather randomly. Obviously the main point of the pack is to provide second pet stuff. Cats get a few cute outfits. The bumblebee one is my favourite. It also has a fairy version on there too. Big and small dogs have a unique outfit for each. I honestly wish they included more for smaller dogs as we only got four items and I feel like there's no reason why the sims team couldn't have resized the meshes for the large dog stuff and put it on the smaller dogs and vice versa. I also wish they included cat clothing for dogs and vice versa too. The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs pack already has enough cute items for cats and dogs alone, so if you just want cute pet stuff, you already have enough in the Sims 4 base game plus the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. The whole point of this pack is to add extra DLC to the Cats and Dogs DLC and they simply didn't go far enough. They should have included absolutely no stuff for human Sims and focused only on cats and dogs, which could have included more costumes costume meshes for large and small dogs and cats. And just to confirm, the outfits for cats and dogs only apply to adult and elder animals, not to puppies or kittens. The cast itself is cute, but there should have been a lot more and there's already enough stuff in the cats and dogs expansion pack. It just gets a 2 out of 10. For the build buy, we got two new pet beds. The small pet bed is cute and comes in some nice swatches and the large pet bed looks like a skinned animal rug. <laughs> Both are as flat as a pancake and I would have rather more plush beds, especially a pet bed with a shelter over it like the cute ones that cats get in real life. They're just too flat for me. The pack comes with various random stuff to fulfill the cute aesthetic in an attempt to likely appear to younger audiences, even though The Sims 4 is a teen plus game. There are various pet things, but most of these just feel like redesigns of the same old meshes of the pet stuff that we already got in the Cats and Dogs expansion pack and I would have rather some new gameplay stuff for cats and dogs. The pack comes with a definitely not humane aquarium coffee table. It's aesthetic only and does not function like an ordinary aquarium in the game. The blinds actually look nice. They're probably the only things I ever really use from the build buy of this pack. The pack comes with paintings that look like hamster pipes. Again, I'm not really sure what this is about and I don't know anyone who's ever really used these, but I guess you can add them to kids' rooms and mix and match them. Some of the buys stuff is okay to be fair but most of it should have been included in cats and dogs. There's also by the way literally no build stuff only buy stuff so that's an issue. The buy stuff appeals to a cutesy aesthetic but seeming that most simmers are older I'd recommend the pastel pop kit if you want a cute vibe because it feels more adult or at least suitable for teen rooms plus and kids rooms. Also I think it's important to point out that a lot of the stuff in the my second pet stuff pack looks like the exact same designs as the cats and dogs pack. As you can see these yellowish things with the cats and dogs pack on the left and the my second pet stuff on the right are literally identical in design. This has led many people to believe that the stuff in my first pet stuff was allegedly meant to be put in cats and dogs but they later on decided to upsell it as extra DLC for the cats and dogs DLC. This pack gets a 1 out of 10 for the buy stuff and if it wasn't for the blinds it would have got a 0 out of 10. In terms of gameplay this pack comes with one gameplay object. Well technically four. A hamster cage, a rat cage, a hedgehog cage, and a void critter cage. A void critters, by the way, are like the Sims 4 version of Pokemon. All of these four objects have the exact same functionality. They're just slightly different in appearance depending on the animal. As you can see, cats can jump onto the cages, although this stuff pack does not include any new gameplay for cats or dogs. The rodents have hunger, attention, and activity needs seen in the social menu. They can be renamed and they have various different social 
interactions. You can play with the rodents and this involves relieving them from their cute colourful prisons and holding them. You can also release them which means they run under the cage and never return and sets them free resulting in you having to buy another if you want to fill the cage again. Rodents can be fed treats. You can also maintain them by filling up their food bowls and filling their cages once in a while. Although you don't have to feed them or clean their cages much which I think is a good thing as it doesn't get in the way of normal gameplay too much. Sims can also study the rodents. For child sims this will raise their creativity skill. Only child sims have this interaction and studying rodents actually completes your child sims homework for the day. This is weirdly overpowered as let's be honest homework for kids sims is a little bit of a chore so this is a nice and actually slightly realistic addition. Rodents can die. They die if you neglect their needs but they can also die of age but you can purchase an anti-aging treat via the vet or via the PC to make them live forever. When they die there's no death animation or tombstone their cages just become empty. Rodents lead secret lives at night time 1am to be exact and sometimes they blast off in a rocket to space. Usually they come back with postcards which are added to the list of base game collectible postcards. There are an addition of seven extra postcards to collect. They can also sometimes come back with space rocks. Sometimes you'll get pop-up notifications about rodents doing things like going to raves or even doing things like donating their organs. This is a bit of a weird but I guess quirky addition although there isn't really an animation for this so you just have to pretend it's happening. As well as befriending the rodents you can also be very mean to them. When you don't look after the rodents well enough they can bite you when you take them out of their cages and this gives a chance to infect your sims with the rabid rodent fever. Over the course of three days it will turn into full-on rabbit rodent fever and your sim actually has a chance to pass it on to other sims if they get close enough to them if they're not careful. Over the course of the three days your sim becomes more and more sick and if you don't give them medicine which is viable from the PC they die. Of course there is not a Satchon Sims video where either Shani Shanice or Chantal Chantal don't die. When the sims become ghosts from rabbit rodent fever their ghosts actually appear in the hamster costume and they are constantly foaming at the mouth and that's probably one of my favorite deaths in the game. It's quite quirky and fun but from a gameplay perspective that's it. Definitely not enough gameplay for the price point. Studying, feeding and cleaning rodent cages will raise a child sims responsibility if you have parenthood. Surprisingly though there isn't that much gameplay cross pack play with cats and dogs. In a weirdly sadistic way I kind of would have wanted cats to eat rodents like they would in the wild and as I said before I would have liked more new gameplay objects for cats and dogs. Traditionally rodents were a part of the standard pets pack in previous sims games but in the sims for they decided to upsell it as DLC for the Cats and Dogs DLC. This pack basically should have been included in the Cats and Dogs expansion pack and the Cats and Dogs expansion pack should have been called the Pets pack like in literally every other Sims game. This pack is weirdly extremely popular and that's because pets have always been popular. Because rodents were a popular part of previous Sims games EA likely thought they could get away with upselling it as separate DLC in order to make more money. Allegedly. And in my opinion this is just highly unethical and exploitive. EA even removed the trailer for this pack from the official Sims YouTube channel after all of the backlash but even more controversially to this day My Second Pet Stuff is one of the most popular packs for The Sims 4 to date and that's because I think EA knew people would buy it anyway because people wanted cute gerbils. The gameplay is shallow and the pack in general is unethical and exploitive. It gets a 2 out of 10 for gameplay. Looking at performance, cats can obsess over the rodent cages way too much. Although at first it's like a cute quirk. As you have seen by my B-roll gameplay footage, my cat literally did not leave the rodent cage alone. It was literally way too much and there should have been coding to prevent this from happening too much. As if you have a cat in the household, they literally do not do anything else but sit on the rodent cage. Other than that though, the pack surprisingly performed very well. It gets an 8 out of 10 for performance. So in terms of my overall conclusion of the pack, my first pet stuff is getting a 3.2 out of 10. The only reason the overall score wasn't lower is because the pack isn't buggy unlike a lot of other Sims 4 packs. I know a lot of you are going to buy this pack anyway because you want cute pets but I did warn you and I am trying my best to be unbiased here. If you appreciate my brutally honest reviews I have an entire playlist of them updated every single week here. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next one.